When you've been coding for some time, you'll start to notice that people use these two terms called stack and then heap. And you're confused and what, what is the difference between stack and heap? And when you see these words, what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking memory. The stack and the heap are two different kinds of memory that your program uses while it's running. And it's important to know the differences because it kind of affects the way that you code your program. This is why I recommend that every programmer should learn C. And that's because it gives you a good foundation for understanding how the stack and the heap are used in your program. C is considered a low level language, but it's actually the highest level language that allows you to have more direct control over the stack and the heap. The higher level languages like Python and Java, they abstract away memory management from the developer. And that just means that the developer doesn't really know what's going on under the hood. And those languages take care of the memory management for you. Even if you're planning to only code in the higher level languages, it's still important to have a basic understanding and general good intuition of the stack and the heap because it makes you be a better developer and you can write more efficient code. And also it allows you to debug issues if you run into issues with memory. So in this video I'll be going over the differences between the stack and the heap so that you're not confused anymore when you read about it online or when someone talks to you about the stack and the heap then you'll know exactly what they're talking about and then I'll go over two examples. One example will be in C and I'll show you how you can manually manage your memory on the stack and the heap. And then I'll go over a Python example where you can really see how understanding the stack and the heap really helps you write more efficient code. So my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey and let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. So what is the stack in the heap? An analogy that I like to think of is a pen in a field. Like picture a pen in a field. A pen is like a enclosed space, right? It has like fences and then you, you have animals in there and they're constrained and they're, but they're organized and they're in a safe space. But then the field is where they can roam around. They are, they're free to go around and that's like the heap. When you see the word stack, I want you to think of functions because stack memory corresponds to functions. And the stack frame is the part of memory that corresponds to the to a certain function. In the stack frame, you'll have certain data like the function's local variables. So if you declare some variables inside a function, it will go on to the stack frame. And then it also has the return address, which allows the program to know where to continue execution once the function has finished. The pros of the stack is that it's fast, it's orderly and automatically managed by the compiler, but the, pro the con is that it's limited in scope and it's limited in size. When you declare variables inside a function, those variables only last as long as the program is inside the function. After the function is over, the memory that's allocated for those variables is freed and can be used for other purposes. Stack frames are also limited in size, so you can only put so much memory inside a stack frame. And that's like my analogy with a pen. You can only fit so many pigs or so many chickens inside that pen, right? It's a, just a limited size. The heap, on the other hand, is more flexible and can hold larger amounts of data. When you see the word heap, I want you to be thinking of the phrase dynamic memory allocation. And that just means that your memory is free to grow or shrink. Like say you have a list in your program and you don't know how long that list is going to be, then uh, the heap would be a good place to store that list because you can make that list grow. You can add some objects to that list or you can remove objects from that list. And that's the main benefit of the heap. It allows you to have dynamic memory allocation. Whereas on the stack, you have to declare an array with a, with a fixed size. And so those lists in the stack are fixed in size. They cannot grow. But in the heap, you can grow that list or shrink that list. And so the heap is also good for having persistent data structures like linked lists or trees. 
The main cons of the heap are that it's slow and it's manually managed. So you have to really be careful of how you're using the heap because if you don't manage your memory in the heap carefully, it can lead to a lot of memory issues. And that's kind of like the field analogy. If you let your animals play around in the field, you have to watch them carefully. All right, so here's a simple example in C that will show the differences between the stack and the heap. So let's go to the main function. Okay, so here we have an int variable called stack var and we set it equal to 10. And this is a stack variable because we don't allocate memory for it manually. I mean, it's automatically allocated for us. And that's because the compiler already knows how much memory to allocate for it because it's just the size of one int. So for the sake of illustration, we'll call this the, the main stack frame and then we'll call this the heap. So this stack variable is located inside the stack frame. So it's just sitting there all organized and neat. And so it's kind of like a pen. It's like in the pen, like of a farm, it's like a pen. And then this is the field. So the stack here and then the heap here. So that's where the stack var is. And then we're going to call this function pen example. And then when we go, when we call that function, what's going to happen is that there's going to be another stack that's created. So it's going to have another variable stack var. It's not going to be the same variable as this one. It's actually going to be in a different location. And basically, this is just a copy of this one. And then we're going to set it equal to 15. So we set it equal to 15. And then you'll see inside pen, it's just going to be, it's going to say 15. And then it'll give a different address here than it does over here. So, and over here, this is the address of this guy. So then after this pen example is done, then this stack frame will be destroyed. And then it's gonna do, after pen example, it's gonna say stack variable percent D, it's just gonna show 10. And then the address here is gonna be different than the one up here. So let's run that. Okay, so inside pen, inside the pen example, the modified stack frame was 15 and the address was this address. The memory address is this address. But then it, after the pen example, if you go to main and after the pen example is over, that stack variable was destroyed. And so then the stack variable is still 10. It's still 10 because we're not we're not changing this value when we called the function. We're actually creating a copy of that variable and changing the variable that variables um, value there. So it's going to have a different address than, oh sorry, it's going to have a different address than the other stack variable. So this address is here, 16BD9B389. And then we had the other stack variable over here and this, this one was this address. So you can see that these are two different locations in memory. All right, now let's look at the example for a heap variable. And so for this heap variable, so we, it's a pointer of type int, and then we use malloc to allocate memory for the size of an int. So what this is doing is we're gonna declare a pointer called heap var. And if you don't know what a pointer is, it's basically just a, a variable type that stores the address of a variable. So the heap variable is gonna store something like this, the address of a variable that has this value. So after this statement, we're going to use malloc to allocate some memory of size int. So this is going to be a location in memory that has size int. And then heap variable, heap var, heap var is going to just equal that memory location. So this is like the address of, of this, of this int here. So this is an int and we don't know what's inside yet. There's no value that we specified yet. Um, but we'll specify a value when we call this function. So we go to the field example. So when field example is called, then a new stack will be created. So this heap variable will be copied over here. And then we're going to access the contents of the heap variable and store it 20 in there. So after this statement, after this statement, we're going to modify this value to 20. Remember, this is an address. So this address is pointing to this location in memory. And this likewise, this address is pointing to this location in memory. And then we're gonna print inside field example, heap variable percent D. It's gonna print 20. And then the address of this heap variable, is gonna be, it's gonna print this, this address here. And then when this function is over, this stack will go away. So after this function call here, the field example, then after field example, heap variable, percent D is this heap var here is going to be 20 and then it will show and then we'll print the address and this address should be the same address as the one here. Okay, so let's run that. 
Okay, so inside field example, heap variable was set to 20. So it's 20. And then the address was this. So this was the actual address. And then when we exited the field example, after this function was called, then we printed this statement. And then we tried to see what the value of this heap variable is, and it's gonna be 20 also. So it's gonna preserve that value. That variable will keep the same value. So it'll have 20 here, and then we print the address, and the address is gonna be the same. And then after we're done using the heap variable, we have to free this heap variable. So what this would do is, it'll just free this part of the heap, and so we now have that space to allocate other variables onto the heap. And then when this, this return zero happens, then this stack will be deleted. And then you have that space, that memory is now free for whatever program wants to use it. So just to recap, we have a stack variable. This stack variable only lives inside the main function. When we pass it to the pen example, and then in the pen example we try to modify it, it's actually creating another stack variable inside there. And it's just a copy of the original stack variable. We modify it there, we can modify it, but then when the pen example is done, that that variable is destroyed. It's only limited to the scope of this pen example. And then when you try to print the value of this stack variable, it's still gonna be 10. It's not gonna change value to 15 because this is a different variable. But with the heap variable, it's different because the heap variable, you're allocating memory on the heap. So this heap memory exists for the duration of the program. So this heap variable was able to be accessed inside this main function. And then you can also access it in this field example. And then we modified the, val the value of heap variable in this field example function. And then we were able to verify that even after the field example was done, we checked the, the, the value of that heap variable after this function was done. And it was still, it still preserved the value. And that's because this field example was modifying the value of a heap variable and uh, this is this heap variable and then afterwards we're able to print it and see after this this function was done we can still see that those changes took effect and so this heap variable that was declared here that heap variable now has the new value and then before we finish the program we want to free that variable so that it can be used for other purposes. And so that's the pro. The heap variable can exist in different functions, but the stack variable, it only exists inside that inside its own function. So that's one of the the positive the pros of the heap variable, but but the con here is that you have to free it after you're done using it. And that's because you you already you created the space manually up here when you did the malloc, but then you also need to free the space manually by using free. All right, now we're gonna go over a Python example and show how understanding stack and heap really changes how you code in Python. So if you have that background in C, you really have a good intuition and foundation for stack and heap, then it will change how you code in Python. So say you're coding in Python and then you wanna code a function called Fibonacci that gives you the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. And if you don't know the Fibonacci sequence, I put it up here so that you can see it. So what this function does is it gives you the nth term of this sequence. So if you put in zero, for n it's going to give you zero if you put in one for n it's going to give you one and then two is going to give you one three is going to give you two so we have this this fibonacci sequence and it's using it's using recursion in order to uh, give you the nth the nth term of the fibonacci sequence and it just basically what it does it just adds up the the last two values together and it gives you the the next value and that's what that's basically what a Fibonacci sequence does. And this is very intuitive, and this is very reasonable for if you're coding the Fibonacci sequence for the first time. Okay, so you see here, if n is equal to six, it gives us eight. And so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it gave us this eight, so that's correct. So it works, um, but there's a problem. I mean, if you use higher numbers than six, you're gonna have some issues. So let's say you wanted to use 30. So now the time is taking longer. And then if we use 40, 
Okay, so that one took 20.1 seconds. And so now you're starting to see that this function, yeah, this function here is not really optimal. And it, if you use higher num higher values for n, it's not gonna work really well. And so you can use your understanding of stacks to see that when you call this function, it will call itself two more times until it gets to the case when n is equal to one. And so you can start to see how there's gonna be an ever increasing growing number of stacks and it's just going to keep doubling and doubling and doubling and then you'll, you'll have a lot of stacks so as someone who now understands how stacks work how a stack how every function has its own stack frame then you'll start to think of a solution what if we just code this without using um, recursion what, what if we code, code this differently so that we don't have to create so many stack frames Okay, so instead of calling Fibonacci over and over and over again and creating so many stacks, why don't we just put a put the list in the heap? Because we can in the heap we can make that memory grow and grow and grow and shrink and shrink and shrink, right? So we'll just create a list called fib and we'll start off by putting 0 and 1 in there first and then we'll we'll basically append to that list using a for loop and then we'll just add to it we're going to add the previous two elements and then we're just going to keep adding to the fibonacci sequence and so if we have this this kind of version or this solution for the fibonacci function then this will give us then hopefully this will take less time than 20 seconds so let's try it with 40 and look at that, it's happened in like 0.0, .0 seconds versus 20.1 seconds. And that's all because you started to realize, well, why don't we use the heap instead of calling this function recursively? Well, let's see if we can use a higher number. Let's try 80. Okay, it's still good. Let's try 800. Okay, it's still good. It's pretty, it's pretty 8,000. Okay, it's still good. 80,000. All right, now it's starting to show some limitations. Now we have 0 0.2 seconds. So now let's continue increasing this one. Okay, that one took one second. <laughs> All right, so now you're using the heap, but then now you can actually optimize this even more and you can realize that, oh, if I use the heap and I make it grow and grow and grow, then I'm going to use so much memory. So why don't I just don't use this uh, list maybe i can have a different solution okay so instead of having a list we can just have two variables and then in this for loop we'll just update these two variables so b will now be a plus b and then a will be b and so we can just use two variables for this so let's run that so now let's see what happens all right so now it takes less time now it's zero just 0 0.3 seconds for a number so, as, as large as this one all right, there you go. There's a basic tutorial of stack and heap. And I showed you how even Python programmers would benefit from knowing what's the differences between stack and heap. And I also showed you the benefit of learning C because in learning C, like I said, you're, you'll, you'll be able to manage your memory more manually. And so when you start to move to the higher level languages, because of your background in C, then you can have you can write more efficient code because you already have a good intuition on how the stack and the heap work. And this was my experience. I learned C first, and so after I learned C, I learned the other higher level languages, and I was able to uh, have a good understanding of how those languages are working because I already understood from the C level how everything was working under the hood. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it helped you out. And if it did help you out, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And if you still don't, if you still have a fuzzy idea of what stack and heap are, don't give yourself, don't, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. It can take some time to really understand stack and heap. And please feel free to rewind the video and try to really understand what I'm, what I'm talking about for the examples. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And that's it for this week's video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.